It's not a plan you have to buy or sign up for. It's not special food you have to have delivered or even a complicated book you have to read. The keto diet is simply a shift in how you eat that claims to turn your body into a fat-burning machine. The ketogenic diet is a high-fat, low-carb eating plan. Eating more fats and very few carbs puts your body into ketosis, a metabolic state where your body burns fat instead of carbs for fuel, often leading to rapid and substantial weight loss. And let's face it, keto is everywhere. Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and people in your own life are all singing the praises of a ketogenic diet. It works. It is not hard to stick with. That was my biggest thing. The reason why keto is so helpful for me is because it completely broke my addiction to carbohydrates. So I lost 40 pounds in 12 weeks. Steak, burgers, bacon, even cheese, and you lose weight. The keto craze has thousands of people trading in their carbs for a high-fat frenzy, and they say they don't miss the sugar or the bread. So when you're in ketosis, that means the liver is making ketones. Ketones are a fuel that get put into the bloodstream. So one of the first things you would notice is increased energy. You have this, this super fuel that your body is creating from fat that's now in your bloodstream. Uh, one of the things that people notice is they no longer crave sweets as much. Uh, would, you, would you all like that, by the way? Which is huge, which is huge, yeah. yeah. So I, I want to point this out yeah. because the people I've talked to, like you, who are successful in keto diets, say it's easy because they're not craving the foods they know they can't have. Right. So another reason or another way you might detect that you're in ketosis is you might smell it on your breath. A little metallic breath, a little sweet rotten apple breath or something like that. But it doesn't have to be bad breath. No, people, no, no. People no, think no. they're going to no, smell I... like the worst thing imaginable. No, no, no. no. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, then a, and then a final way is, is on urine strips. So, you know, you pee purple, right? It's a, that's one of the hallmarks of being in ketosis is it's demonstrated by the, by the urine. Yeah. So come on over. I want you yeah. to show you what kinds of foods we sure. can and what we can't eat on this program. And again, Absolutely. people aren't shipping this to you in a box. You're going to actually make these decisions yourself. We, we're treating you like an adult because you should be treated like an adult to make wise decisions. So what is okay to eat? Green checks for keto. Right. Okay. So... Um, Protein rich, these are clean proteins. So we got beef, pork, lamb, chicken, uh, turkey. So the, the, these meats have fats, obviously, which right. is what you're looking for, but you can get your fat without having to produce, you don't have to have a steak to get the fat. Absolutely not. So then we have uh, nuts and seeds uh, and oil. So we have uh, macadamia nuts, one of my favorites, pecans, uh, Brazil nuts, uh, avocado oil, uh, coconut oil, butter, ghee, um, uh, uh, full fat yogurt, for instance, and even some of the, you know, the fringe foods like unsweetened almond milk are okay. I'm just going to go through a couple of these things. First of yeah. all, so there's lots of things you can eat that are actually arguably good for you, but there are things, this is what throws docs off, mm -hmm. they're in the don't eat category, they're right. also good for you, right? right? I mean, we all know not to have soft drinks, but what's the problem with an apple or a potato, so, for example? Yeah, so apples, carrots, those are what we call high glycemic fruits and vegetables. So they convert to glucose pretty quickly in the bloodstream. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to reduce the amount of, glu of glucose that gets into the bloodstream because glucose shuts off ketosis, right? right? So we want to avoid bread, pasta, cereal, uh, cakes, candies, pies, cookies. I'm sorry, but, you know, that's what <laughs> oh, that, that goes along with it. They're going to rush the stage. No, look at all the good stuff you can eat, right? <laughs> so, so uh, you know, yeah. Mark, thank you very much. We'll sure. be back. We'll check in okay. in a second. Okay. So anyone who does keto knows their macros. That's the breakdown of how much fat, protein, and carbs are in their daily diet. And most keto people keep their macros at around 70% with 25% protein and about 5% carbs. But listen, everyone has their own approach. So I want to call on keto coach Stephanie, who actually has more fats in her macro than, for example, Mark does. Did I get that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How much more fat do you have? Up to about 80% around 200 grams of fat. So it's mostly fat in your diet. Yes. And how do people calculate out the amount of these macros in the real world? They're not going to be weighing them in scales all the time. No. Dr. Oz, people, this is the one thing with my clients. They're like, Steph, how do I measure this? And I'm like, it's simple. Just use your hands. So, for example, yep. if you're going to measure your protein, you just use two to three fingers. That's two to three ounces. You place it over your protein. And that gives you the idea of how much. Okay. Then you put your hands together like you're going to pray, and now we have the thickness of the protein. Super simple. Yeah. And there's a rule of three that you abide by that shows you we're getting enough of the fats that we need. Yes. So when it comes to your fats, it's very, very simple as well. You take a tablespoon 
of olive oil. You'll go one, two, three onto a plate. That's your rule of three. You just count them out. Just count them out. So when it comes to your vegetables, yep. you take your hand, mm -hmm. you grab loosely, which symbolizes one cup of a cruciferous vegetable, plop it down on your plate. If you have a salad, if you have cooked vegetables, you can go up to three handfuls. Typically go up to, people go up to two. One, two, or three, mm -hmm. and that's easy. Just a loose hand equates a cup. Part of the reason I wanted to have you on was I wish I wanted to understand how it worked for you. So you've been on a keto diet for 10 years, is that right? Yeah, 10 years, guys, 10 years. How has it affected you? 51 years of age, 51. I used to be a professional skateboarder and I ate horrifically. And because I've done keto for so long, for 10 years, all the inflammation has gone down to here. So my health is amazing. I cannot speak more highly of keto. We are back talking about a ketogenic way of eating. When you hack your body into a state of ketosis, where you start burning fat for fuel. Now I'm joined by trainer Drew Manning, who swears by ketosis. And just to give you an example, a few years ago, Drew gained 75 pounds. There he is. To understand what it meant to be overweight so he could relate to his clients. Then what he did, he lost in six months all that weight. And he has maintained it through a ketogenic lifestyle. So that's what we're talking about today. So I want him to break it down so we can all understand exactly what we should eat on a ketogenic diet. So I've got some representation here. Explain to me how this works. So you wanna uh, make sure you get enough fat in. So 75 to 80% of your total calories should come from fat. That's why I see all this butter here. 15, 10 to 15% should come from protein and about 5% from carbs. So you gotta make sure and keep your carbs low and load it up with fat. So one more time, so three quarters of everything is fat. Yes. Which is more than I talk about. Only, yep. only about 20% is protein. That's a lot lower than I usually recommend. Exactly, it's a high fat, moderate protein, low carb approach. And what's the problem with having more protein and less fat? Because if you eat too much protein, it can actually kick you out of ketosis through a process called gluconeogenesis. So if you eat too much protein, it'll kick you out of ketosis and it'll convert it to the protein to glucose. Yeah, it's, which is interesting, actually, we, we do make glucose from lots of things, except we can't make it from fat. Exactly. So fat's your ally, you're saying the more fat you eat, the less sugar you're gonna have in your body, no matter what your body tries to do. Exactly. And what happens if you have some really healthy, colorful vegetables that happen to have a little carbohydrate in them? Yeah, so you definitely wanna limit those types of vegetables, like sweet potato, jams, carrots, because they're a little bit starchier, and they're higher in carbs. So you definitely gotta make sure to keep those carbs low, otherwise it'll kick you out of ketosis. So you know I do for a living. I'm a heart yes. surgeon, right? <laughs> sure. I spend my day taking people's chests and opening with a bandsaw and getting in there to, to pull out stuff that looks like this yes. from arteries. <clears throat> so it just makes me a little nervous. You're not concerned that this might be unsafe? You know, I, I used to think that way as well. A lot of us have thought that way for a long period of time. But if you look at the, a lot of the new research, it shows when you eat these good quality fats without the presence of refined sugars and processed carbohydrates, it actually forces your body to use that fat for fuel instead of storing it in the body and clogging your arteries. And you say these good fats, so what, what fats do you prefer to eat? I guess it's probably yeah. not, you know, No, I don't eat this much butter. This is not what a typical day looks like <laughs> for me, but uh, coconut oil, coconut, avocado, avocado oil, things like uh, fattier meats, bacon, salmon, um, fattier cuts of beef even, so. So real whole versions, but not yeah. a lot of saturated fats. All right, are there any fats that are off limits you won't eat at all? Yeah, you definitely want to stay away from hydrogenated oils, margarine, soybean oil, vegetable oils, those types of oils you definitely want to stay away from, so. All right, so bacon, <laughs> trans fats, right? The whole egg. Right, but, and, and, and so healthier fats, what would you just count that? All right, so if we take, take this as our basic formula, you also understand this right now. Your body will then begin to burn the fat that you have on it. It has to, no choice. Yes. And that's what you found in your life. That's how you got rid of that. That's how you got that six pack. Is there, is there a six pack? Let me see this. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so forget about embarrassing me. I've got Kendi here who matters more. <laughs> Kendi, Kendi is thinking about coming on a ketogenic diet. How are you, Kendi? Good, how are Good. you, Dr. Oz? So, you just heard Joe explain a little bit about this diet. This yes. is about what's getting you thinking about doing this? Bacon, first of all. Bacon? <laughs> I just I said not to eat bacon. bacon all day. Uh, I can have bacon. <laughs> well, you can have some bacon, Some right? bacon, yeah. So, but not, not only bacon. bacon. Well, you know, the thing that really excites me is, you know, I have been trying to lose this 35 pounds for the past year. I've tried every diet. I've tried shakes. 
I've tried low carb, I exercise regularly, and nothing's working. So I'm really excited to see what this can do for me. I want you to show me what you really eat every day. So first of all, I start off my morning with coffee. Everybody likes coffee, but I'll add coconut oil and butter, blend it up, it tastes delicious. It's actually really filling, and that'll last me a couple hours. And then, okay, that, that's all you have for breakfast? Coffee with butter in it? Coffee with butter and coconut oil, blend it up. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually really filling. The fat will definitely keep you satiated throughout the day. And that's why it lasts me until noon. You put, put some bacon bits in it. You'll make you happy. <laughs> all right. Could be a new thing. So, okay, so then for, for lunch? So I, I wait until my body tells me I'm hungry, which is usually around lunchtime. So a couple eggs, spinach, saute that in some butter, you know, add a slice of bacon, half of an avocado. Bacon. Right, you love bacon, bacon eggs, bacon. avocado, right? Everybody loves that. And that should last you hopefully until dinner, but if you do get hungry, one of my go-to snacks, you guys, is macadamia nuts. High in fat, low in carbs, uh, very tasty, and that'll help carry it's, me over. It's so dinner. crazy, because you, you know, we all grew up thinking macadamia nuts had too much fat in them. You're saying you like the fat in macadamia nuts, in fact, you eat them because they don't have too much protein in them. Exactly, lower protein, lower carbs, high fat. So it's, uh, it's perfect for the ketogenic lifestyle. <laughs> okay, and then dinner. And the dinner, bacon cheeseburger. More enough, bacon. enough said. <laughs> this is a typical one. I mean, you don't have to have bacon every meal, but what I'm saying is uh, the, the fattier cut of meat, the cheese, the bacon, and the avocado is all low carb, right? High fat, moderate amount of protein. So you worry more about the bun than the burger? Totally. Yep. What do you think about that? <laughs> Could you do this? Yeah, I, I really do. And you know, the thing that I like about it is it's structured. I need rules. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely need rules. Yeah. Well, I, I, I gotta say, I, I'm intrigued, uh, but I'm gonna, if I can't speak openly about some of my concerns. So first off, I'm fascinated by the science, and thanks for bringing it to, to my attention, Dr. Axe, as well. The whole idea that we could hack our body to work more efficiently is pretty cool. We don't, we don't know enough about its effect on diseases. We just don't. But it has been shown to work for weight loss, so maybe it's worth trying. And if nothing else has worked, like you're telling me, Candy, so many folks at home, I like this idea. Maybe try it for just a couple weeks, see how it works for you. But here's the thing, I do worry that it's not sustainable as a long-term diet. It's not as good at long-term, I don't think, as some of the other diets we talked about in the show. Because let's be clear, if you fall off the wagon and you have a little bun with that burger, right, and you reach for a carb, you're basically now on a high-fat, high-calorie diet, which is the opposite of what you want to be on. It takes a very little bit of a mistake to make a big problem happen in your body. So can you be really strict about this? I can. It is one of the hottest diets around. You're always asking me about it. The ketogenic diet, which focuses on high-fat foods to help burn fat, body fat. So again, high-fat foods, they say, will burn body fat. How's that possible? Well, superstar pro athlete Tim Tebow is back to break down the truth about this trendy diet and to show you his top keto secrets for success. I mean, this thing is everywhere. And with the fact that pro athletes like you who you know, get paid to manage your body and have advisors giving you insights are, is, is in love with the diet means a lot to me. So what has it done for you? Oh, it's done so much. To be honest, I've been on this for over seven years now. Ooh. And so I was kind of on it before the trend. And for me, it's not just about my body or staying lean or trying to be in shape. It's also about my brain. It's about waking up each day and fueling your brain so that you feel um, cognitively ready to go and ready to take on the day. All right, so break it down. Uh, give me a, a, a plate of keto. What would you normally have on it? I would have all of this stuff. I love cashews, love steak, love chicken. Um, you know, you, obviously you gotta have your vegetables. So I'll even make like spinach shakes. Um, I'll put, you know, cauliflower with my But not a lot. Up. No, not necessarily as much, but I will have a lot of fat. So I know the, the bacon it looks really good. And a lot of people are like, no, I stay away from bacon. I don't stay away from bacon. I love it. You eat bacon. I eat bacon, I love bacon, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gosh. We'll come back to that in a second. <laughs> now, but yeah, this is a 75% fat. You may mm. actually have a little more protein, I know, because you're an athlete. Yeah. But this is the rough breakup of it. So a lot of you have questions about it because it does seem too good to be true. So let's go to Leah over here. What's your question, Leah? Does keto really burn fat and how does it work? How does it work? You want to show everybody how it works? Sure, let's All do right. it. I mean, a little animation is based on Tim's body. <laughs> right? And what it could be and what, and what it is now. So sugar, obviously, is everyone's favorite energy source, right? And whether you eat it from foods and whatever the source might be, cookies or ice cream, but also even healthy carbohydrates, it converts you to sugar in your body. And when you eat too much of that sugar, you begin to get big and wide like you can see here in this little animation. By eating a ketogenic diet, right? These are the foods that Tim was just talking about, right? They're not the foods, like there's an avocado there, but you can have bacon too in this conceptually. You're eating primarily fats. And as long as you do this long enough, instead of running on sugar, your body has to switch over to burn some of the fat that you store. So all that fat, you know, those love handles in this animation, begins to shrink away a little bit. Uh, at the end, when you break down fat, you create a chemical called ketones. Ketones. 
And it's those ketones, which we all know about in medicine, but you're just figuring out in the pop culture is important to understand, is what, is what, is what gives rise to the phrase ketosis. You'll sometimes smell ketones on the breath of people who are on a ketonic, ketotic diet, a ketogenic diet. Can you diet. smell my breath? No. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was really close. Yes. But. Minty, fresh breath. How, why don't you have ketones coming out of your mouth? <laughs> no, he, he, checks, he checks his blood test. You, I know your ketones are high. Why don't you have ketones in your breath? Uh, probably it's because I brush my teeth. I don't know. <laughs> all right, next question is from Alexa, and it's about a keto snack, because we all need snacks. How are you, Alexa? Good, how are you? What do you got for us? Did What's you try question? one? I okay. have not Don't try one. yet. <laughs> no, you got it in one second. Tim, it's all about timing. You're Why professional are you yelling athlete. at me? All right. so, all right. I especially love carbs, so how do you not get bored of fats and proteins, especially in snacks? Well, that's a really good question. For me, I have snacks like this, and this is a, a healthy snack that's sort of like a Reese PC type treat, and it will have um, coconut oil, it will have real cacao, it will have MCT oil, so it's like a fat bomb for me. So it's, I think it tastes pretty good, especially when you haven't had sugar in years. And, but it also is kind of gives you that sweet flavor and a little bit of a crunch, so it's kind of like a Reese PC. You didn't add sugar to this because it's quite sweet. No sugar. Stevia. If you like stevia, you yeah. put stevia in it. What do you think of it, Alexa? It's really good. It's really tasty and light and refreshing. Come on, Alexa. If you were on a desert island, what ketogenic food would you take with you? I would want to take those Reese pieces, but I think they would melt. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think I would take avocado. Avocado? Probably. There it is, guys. And Tim says he actually eats three avocados a day, which that seems high to me. Is that what you really do? Yeah. If you literally just cut it open, have a half, have another half later, it's such an awesome like, meal replacement. Did, can I ask you a personal question? Of course. Does your poop ever turn green? <laughs> it, it actually, in theory... I get why you said it's a personal question. <laughs> I, don't, I guess I don't really check. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone looks. Everybody looks. Well, in theory, Alexa, just to warn you, now he's a big guy, but if you were to have you know, four, five, six of these babies a day, it could create problems in that regard. But just to do the math, three avocados is 700 calories if you have all three. So that's 63 grams of fat. So it meets the ketogenic diet, but it's a lot of calories for a lot of folks. So you need to work out if you're gonna have that many calories or have two avocados. Mm -hmm. Now, more than a little hack, notice I would normally have, and you would too, some kind of chip with this. Yes. He uses cucumber, oh. which is pretty clever. So you go ahead and give it a shot. Sure, Don't be so fearful here. It's not gonna bite you. But these are the kind of it's hacks. It's healthy, but it also gives a nice little crunch. Oh, she's waiting. She's waiting. Oh, wow. That's really good. So there you have it. Did Tim See, convince that's what you I'm to go about. keto? You, would you go keto? I definitely would. More convinced today. How many folks are more open minded to keto now that you heard from Tim? Put your hands up. Oh, you got the whole audience on board. <laughs> well, if that's the case, check out Tim's new book. It's called This Is The Day. There's a beautiful picture of it there. Pay attention to this guy. He's got a lot of good wisdom. We'll be right back. Have you heard of keto? I want to do keto. Keto, keto is amazing. Keto. keto is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Tebow on keto. I plan to stick to keto. Keto. On the keto diet, I keto. You can't go anywhere or talk to anyone without hearing that word. Keto. And this is half your relatives are on the keto diet. The other half say they can't wait to start. But have you ever wondered if you or your friends and family are doing keto all wrong? Today, we have the answer. Take a look at these photos. They're, they're, they're flooding Instagram, right? Under the hashtag dirty keto. And they're saying, for example, look at this one. It says tacos with a taco shell made from fried cheese. I mean, I mean it looks good, but could you wait, lose weight with that? How about this one? This one says a plate full of convenience store snacks. And this is really fantastic. Even a pizza pie with all fried cheese crust. And they're still losing weight. So what's the catch? Nutrition expert and best-selling author Josh Axe is here. Dr. Axe is gonna help us figure this out. I think a lot of us are doing keto. Either they didn't do it the right way to begin with or they've tipped into dirty keto. So I want you, if you can, explain to us what regular keto is and what dirty keto is so we know what we're really doing to ourselves. Yeah, so regular keto, Dr. Oz, is number one, we want to get clean sources of protein. Wild-caught fish, grass-fed beef, legumes and beans. And then the big part of the diet is 75% healthy fat, yeah. avocados, coconut, cacao, dark chocolate, nuts and seeds, flax seeds. We should be doing loads and loads of healthy fats. And then 
our 5% carbs here, and that's part of the key of getting into keto is you lower the carbs, your body gets in that fat burning zone, but those carbs, you want them to come from nutrient dense vegetables loaded with vitamins and minerals. That's really the key to doing it the right way. This is a healthy diet no matter how you mix up the macronutrients. Okay, what is dirty keto? So now dirty keto, here's the surprising thing, it's the exact same macros, but you're just getting the completely wrong food in your diet. For instance, you know, we see this on Instagram, but your 20% of your proteins are coming from conventional beef and pork and bacon. And you know, a lot of your fat is coming from processed dairy and cheese. And then your 5% carbs are coming from things like low carb pizza that's full of preservatives and other chemicals. So not good, it's, it's really dirty. All right, so yeah. now we know dirty versus clean. And some people own it, right? You dive right into the dirty version of keto. And I see those posts all the time. You're very proud of it. But other people have tipped in to being in dirty keto and haven't even appreciated it. You've seen a lot of confusion amongst your patients. What are they saying to you? Yeah, well, one of the things I see pretty frequently, for instance, I had a patient come in and he said, Dr. Axe, I'm on this new thing called the keto diet. And I said, hey, that's great. Where'd you learn about it? He said, social media. And I said, well, what are you eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And I promise you this is what he was eating. Okay. For breakfast, butter, bacon, and eggs. For lunch, he would do a bacon burger. And for dinner, ready? Yes. A bacon burger. Oh my that goodness. That was his That's entire fantastic. diet. <laughs> was he losing but, weight? You know, here's the thing is he was losing weight. He did, he lost about 15 pounds in 30 days. But here's the thing, he was still sick on the inside. He was bloated, he was fatigued, he wasn't feeling well. I then got him on eating the real keto diet the right way. He continued to lose weight and continued to see even better results. All right, come on, I want you to meet someone. Debbie's here because she's thinking about keto. She sees all these delicious high fat foods on Instagram like the rest of us. And you wanna know a little bit more about this. It, it does dirty keto work, is it safe? You just told us a, a patient of yours lost 15 pounds, so it does seem to work. Debbie, what's, what does dirty keto mean to you? What's the appeal? Going through a fast, uh, fast food joint, uh, drive through this is what dirty keto you know, means to me. It's quick, easy food that you could just take the bun off the meat and, and you're set to go. So let me work, walk you through some of the things I get concerned about when I hear people pull into a fast food joint, get the, the burger without the bun, think they're on keto. And a lot of you hearing about this with the fan members and yourselves, eating unhealthy food and worrying about the saturated fats, that could be a concern. It has always been a concern. It could be really an issue for your heart. So let's go inside an artery and show you what is the big issue for doctors. Now the arteries inside the heart, they're a passageway to life. They bring nourishing blood to everywhere. The lining is very thin. If it starts to get thickened because you're building a plaque over time, and especially if you have inflammation, watch what happens. The inflamed plaque is prone to this, a rupture. It gets irritated and that little plaque begins to pull off. Now you've got an open scab inside the body. Body wants to heal that scab. It starts to put blood in there because you're inflamed and that scab now blocks off the artery completely so no blood can get through and feed the heart. It has, same thing can happen in the brain. It can happen in other organs leading to strokes and heart attacks. But if heart disease feels like something way off in the future, well, don't worry about that because you're losing weight. You're feeling good now, right? While eating a diet full of pork rinds, I hear you. This doesn't seem like it's an urgent issue, but denying yourself the micronutrients, the good stuff in food, could be affecting your body right this minute. And I want you to introduce you to someone that I care a lot about, one of my producers, Sasha, who has discovered this the hard way. I know, now, hi guys. If I can <laughs> brag on Sasha for a second, a uh, wonderful mother, uh, wanted to lose some weight, went on Dirty Keto about four months ago, we've been hearing about it, we've been just watching her on Instagram, and that's why I've been able to identify what you're eating. How, many, how much weight did you lose? 33 pounds in about four months. Wow. But um, when I first started the keto plan, I was all in doing it right, eating the healthy fats, but then life happens. And then I started going for the shortcuts, going on Instagram, seeing that you can, you know, fry up some cheese or eat some bacon, do the pork rinds. I'd never had pork rinds before. And I thought, oh my God, I can have this on keto. So even though I did continue to lose the weight, I was feeling more tired. I was feeling bloated even, and um, I just noticed that I needed to kind of like switch back and get back on the right track. Dr. Axe, concerns about pork rinds and a lot of other things that she's posting, by the way, go check her out. Oh yeah, check out my Instagram. I'm <laughs> eating the bacon, the pork rinds, because I'm on the go and I'm running fast, but on Instagram, they're like, these are keto friendly, keto friendly, so then I get excited. Yeah, well, I think, you know, one of the things to know is, is that some of the symptoms you're talking about, you mentioned the bloating, yeah. the lack of energy. Those are symptoms of what we call keto flu, which is really common. And, and that can happen even when you're doing the keto diet 
the right way, but typically the symptoms are less severe. When you're doing dirty keto, the symptoms get exacerbated and it can even lead to other health problems like constipation, yeah. dehydration, other flu-like symptoms. So we not only want people to lose weight, we want people to Feel good. be healthy on the inside, getting those vitamins and minerals to help nourish our organs. So I, I get, we haven't done big medical studies to prove all this yet, yeah. but you mentioned inflammation. That was the issue with the heart attacks. Nutrient deficiencies, skin disorders, yeah, these are really common. You know, inflammation is a major cause of arthritis, heart disease, chronic pain. You know, when we're talking about some of the other conditions, nutritional deficiency, you can be deficient in vitamin B12, your energy vitamin, magnesium and zinc for your immune system. And also, here's the big thing, rebounding weight, weight gain. A lot of people, when they're not you doing this as a lifestyle, eating these real foods, they will gain the weight back really That's the quickly. Thing too, the weight kind of like halted when I'm in that like dirty, like in a rush phase and I'm not really thinking about what I'm eating. The weight kind of does uh, halt the weight loss. So what changes do you recommend to Sasha and others so they can keep losing the weight or, or stabilize wherever they want to be without tipping in the dirty keto? Well, here's the truth is people can do the keto diet the right way and eat amazing and delicious foods. You know, some of my favorite things I've had my patients do is I've had them consume things like almond butter with some really dark chocolate. Ooh, that's delicious. That's you know, guacamole is a really high fat, healthy food. And then also, you know, there are recipes online. Now, some are really bad, okay, yeah, the fried cheese, but there are recipes for keto chocolate chip cookies, keto pancakes, keto brownies, where they're using almond flour, coconut flour, coconut oil, natural sweeteners. In fact, I have a lot of those you know, foods in my book. You can find a lot online. But again, there, there's a right way to do keto that can still taste delicious. Yeah, right? I want to lose weight. I just don't want to be tired yeah. or feel bloated. I want, you, I want you working even harder if it's impossible. Yeah. I know. I need more energy. <laughs> yeah. We just talked about the wrong way to do keto, but some revolutionary research taken the medical community by storm is showing doing keto the right way can not only result in weight loss, which I know you love, right, but may even help fight diseases like cancer and diabetes, even neurological conditions. Some doctors are even praising this type of ketogenic lifestyle with actually giving your brain more power. That I love. My friend Montel Williams says he's living proof keto can improve your health. So the big my friend. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this information. Now, let me brag on you for a second. Sir. 2000, right? Sir. He's diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Yes, sir. Not told much about what he could do that would make it better because he didn't know much. Told I was going to have a 15% less chance, or life, life expectancy, so I should really be dead now. Yeah. So that's crazy. <laughs> and then just this year, yes, you sir. had a life-threatening th stroke. After all that, you've been able to walk out here. You're the person I've always known and loved, which is remarkable. And you argue the keto diet is part of this. I think it's because of the protection, the neural protection. You said something really good before you showed the tape, and that's the fact that we're starting to prove we know that the brain uses ketones as its source of energy. In your great documentary, you say that we've gotten nutrition downright wrong. That's your quote, downright wrong for years. How Abs so? Absolutely, because in the Western diet, most of our diet is based on carbohydrates and sugar. We need to bring those things down, and that's what I'm trying to do, because I want to be around. I mean, I really? want you to be around too. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to be around. Yeah, I had a beautiful family, a beautiful wife. I want to be able to be here for her. And after having the stroke, you know, for a while I started, you know, dabbling in keto before the stroke. But I'm telling you, it has really been since the stroke that I am really trying to get 100% and go overboard because I know the neural protection I'm going to get out of it. So this is not just about eating right the way you think you need to eat right. right. We got to th think about it in a whole different way. Yes, sir. And a lot of you aren't ready for that which is why I thought I'd figure out where you all are by asking all of you, the members of the audience, to fill out a little blank piece of paper that had a sentence, the beginning of a sentence. The sentence said, fatty foods are, and then blank page. And what did the people say? This was says, fatty foods are artery blockers. Yeah, we, well, that's one thing I'm concerned about. I talked about that earlier, right? And again, it depends on the type of fat, right? Because trans fats is what our problems are. When you were talking about earlier about you know, people eating pork rinds, yeah. that's made in trans, in trans fat, yeah. that's why. How about the silly statement that fat doesn't make you fat? As a matter of fact, it helps your body process fat. We need dietary fat to have good nutrient absorption. We need it for lots of reasons, and we kind of made fat out to be the villain, and it's not, it's the sugar that's the villain. So come on over here. Montel worked with experts all over the world looking at the ketogenic lifestyle, and it looked at specifically the effect not just on the body, but on the mind. So let's walk everyone through exactly the theories on why keto might be so beneficial. Because we've yes, had sir. people on this stage saying, if you want to deal with Alzheimer's symptoms, 
Keto is the way to go. MS, keto. Absolutely. Just recover your stroke, keto, a lot of things, but it might be good for you if you have any of those things, right? Because if you're like this, imagine what it could do for you if you don't have the, the barriers. And you don't just have it, just happen to have just had a stroke. The brain normally consumes carbohydrates as energy. That's what we always thought was the main thing, and it, it really is. However, some studies in animals suggest that simple carbohydrates can potentially increase inflammation. The nemesis for neurological disease. Yeah, it makes everything more difficult. You can't heal with inflammation. But when you stop eating foods that are rich in carbohydrates and instead replace them with foods that are rich in fats, you know, all these things that I'm showing up there, the brain uses the ketones from that fat as energy. And this may reduce the inflammation in the brain and can protect you against certain diseases which can X out and remove because your body can heal itself better. So what benefits have you noticed in your lifestyle since going ketogenic? I know, you know, before again, well, my issue was high blood, high blood pressure is probably what caused my stroke. My blood pressure has been almost steady, mm -hmm. on a steady path. My weight has been, I'm 62 years old, I'm here walking around with a, with a, with a 31 inch waist. So I'm, I'm holding it down. makes me jealous. And, and I, don't, I don't have to think about it. That's what's so good about it. I mean, I know that, you know, a lot of people are suffering with weight issues because you think about it all the time. You change over to a ketogenic diet, diet and lifestyle, you have to stop thinking about it because it just happens. So I got a guess for it. Omira is here. Oh, okay. Been a huge fan of yours, and she was diagnosed with Myra. MS How are you? in 2016. Good, 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 good. Glad to see you're doing well. Okay, so you're a recent diagnosed yes. patient of MS. Montel's been there, you know, for 17, 18 years. Yes. You have a question for him? Um, yes, I do. Sure. I've been on a weight loss journey for quite some time, and I find it sometimes to be like. You know, I get bored quickly. Sure. So how do you follow the keto diet and not get bored or tired? I hate the word diet, Doc. And you, you have them all. If, if, if all the diets that are online work, there'd only be one. Right. But there's about a million of them. So skip the word diet. You have to get into a lifestyle change. Okay. That's what's so important. I know you're working out and exercising, but if you mm -hmm. start to shift over to make fat your energy source, I yes. will guarantee some of that fog that you have in the brain will start to clear. You'll start to have a little bit more energy when you wake up in the morning. You'll be ready to go rather than, oh, woe is me, give me another cup of coffee. So there are things that you have to do and stop thinking about it so much as if you have to meet this regimen. Look, I'm on a keto diet, but I do cheat every now and then, but I don't call it cheating. It's like every 14 or 15 days, if I feel like eating something, I'm gonna eat it. Sure. And guess what? After 14 days of keto, you don't feel like eating it anyway. Skip the cupcakes because you just don't want it. You take a bite of them and you go, mm. You can just know that once you start, stop putting them in your body, your body will start craving them. He used to be a cookie guy. Yeah, cookie freak. Freak. So mm. if, yes. he, if he can find it easy, you will. I am back with Montel Williams and wellness expert Naomi Whittle, who has seen dramatic transformations of people who have been practicing keto the right way. They're about to reveal exactly what you can do to get the best results. But first, Naomi, you've got a lot of people you've taken care of. You have some before and some afters. I just want people to see this so they understand what we're talking about. It's so incredible to see these kind of before and afters. Now, these are individuals that watched the docu-series, The Real Skinny on Fat, and they transformed their life. This is my CFO. He oh dropped my goodness. 68 pounds. But what's way more important, Dr. Oz, is he got off of 14 medications. He went down to one. And so all of these individuals yeah. did it by going from being sugar burners to fat burners, less carbs and more good fats. And this video, the, our docu-series is available. I think they can go on your website and yeah. download it. Yeah. They can go on Naomi's website, download it, and get the information. Over 80 doctors around the world mm -hmm. contributed to this. These are some of the top doctors in the world. Because I didn't want to give you any, any bulk, you know, stupid information. I wanted really good heart science. Good for you. Come on over here. I'm going to okay. show you what, what Montel is eating. Naomi, you're going to hold us honest on this. Yes. I would have asked Montel because I believe him, but since you helped design the program, I want yes. to hear it from your lips. So what sure. does he have for breakfast? So Montel eats hard-boiled eggs, lots of good fat in his smoothie. And then if you go to his lunch, he's having a poke bowl, but he's having it with salmon. So he's getting the omega-3s. He's getting his avocado. So many good things in this delicious It meal. looks tasty. And, of course, everyone loves, you know, noodles and, and uh, fat. Oh fatty meatballs, and what you're getting here is you're getting zucchini noodles, so you're not getting the carbs. What she's not telling you about, there's a little secret weapon that's inside of all this, and that's called creamy MCT oil. Come on over here, so I want to show you that. Amazing. This, is a, this is an important Absolutely issue. amazing. There's a lot of snacks to what you get you, you, know, to you, get you through the day, yes. Yes. and this creamy MCT oil is something you add to a lot of these snacks. Uh, about, uh, you know, think, this is an important booster. Montel and Naomi like it so much they actually sell the stuff. So first explain why you like it to be creamy. 
Yes, okay. So I love Creamy MCT because what it does is it bypasses the digestive system, goes right to our liver, and allows us within four hours to be producing twice as many ketones. It is the shortcut to keto. And I like it's it to be It's the secret weapon, Michelle. Sure. <laughs> because it's so gentle on the body. So what kinds of snacks do you eat, Montel? <gasps> you can eat it in a shake like this. This is a really good shake. It's a vegetable shake, but it's got you know, MCT oil, it's got coconut oil, it's got coconut water, it's got chunks of coconut mm. in it, all blended up so that you're getting that good natural fat. And the other thing about this, this creamy MCT oil is that you can have it in coffee. You oh. can make it in things, you can make it in this is really macadamia nut yeah. cups. So what's in these? So these have macadamia nuts, so they're filled with the good fats in there and creamy MCT. Mm. Isn't that... S oh my goodness. Is that so good? Okay, that wait. <laughs> Oh, really good. <laughs> Keep talking. Love it. Okay, <laughs> so here is our absolute favorite. favorite, right, Montel? Absolutely. And you're gonna love this, Dr. Oz. You gotta take a taste of it. I can't wait. It'll this is ice cream. This is an ice cream, but you make it so that you can make it. It'll stay in the refrigerator for about mm, three to four weeks, right? Mm -hmm. But taste this, and this will blow you out the door. Ready? So you're not. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. It's so rich. This is really keto ice cream? Yes. It's keto ice cream. I can't you can believe make, you can make the this. Recipes, uh, no. uh, the recipes on, on Naomi's website, I, you can make this at home. We're going to put all the recipes for all of these MCT oil snacks on DrOz.com. Please make these chocolate things and store them. Use them as your snacks. Be sure to check out Montel's new documentary, The Real Skinny on Fat, streaming online right now. We'll be right back, everybody. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new.